Okay, this is the next section. It's section 11.1. .1. We're talking about angle measures and polygons. This is into the chapter about the properties of polygons. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the interior and exterior angles in common polygons, but we'll be also be extending that to talk about different kinds of polygons, ones with different numbers of sides, and in general, if they have n numbers of sides. And so, once again, this is a reminder. Go ahead, slow it down, pause it, do whatever you need to do to be able to get this material into a format that you enjoy and that you can comprehend. So here we go, section 11.1. .1. Common polygons, we're going to start out with a triangle and a quadrilateral. And now obviously with these three columns here, we have the number of sides, which is pretty self-explanatory, um, the number of triangles, which I will show you, and the sum of the interior angle measures. Well, first of all, let's take apart a triangle. The number of sides, obviously a triangle has three sides. And so when we look at it, the number of triangles is when we connect vertices, okay, through the interior of the triangle. So obviously in a triangle there is only one triangle. There's only one. And so with one triangle we have a sum of the interior angle measures, which is a theorem that we had way back when, to be 180 degrees, okay? So whatever it happens to be, these three angles here are 180 degrees, okay? Let's take apart a quadrilateral. The number of sides of a quadrilateral, obviously quad, meaning four. So quad meaning four. And if it has four sides, what we're looking at here is how many triangles can we create by connecting the vertices. Okay, so let's let's just check. If I go through the middle here, and I'm going to get my line drawing tool to do this, and I connect corner to corner, how many triangles do I have? Well, obviously, I have formed two triangles, and there's two triangles, so there's 180 degrees in this one, but there's also 180 degrees in this one between the angle measures here. Okay, and so no, regardless of what quadrilateral it is, if it's a trapezoid, if it's a rhombus, if it's a rectangle, if it's a square, or if it's just some quadrilateral, it has two triangles. So the total number of degrees is going to be 360, which we've already discussed in this class. And so we're just doing this progressive counting up. So when we go to the next slide, we're going to do the same thing. And I obviously have a, a diagram of a pentagon and a hexagon here at the bottom. Pentagon has five sides. So the number of triangles is going to look like this. Get my line drawing tool. We go here. We go here. Notice when I'm doing this, I'm not crossing. I'm not creating X's in the middle of this shape. I've simply gone from one vertex to each subsequent vertex and found out how many triangles it divides it into. Well, if I look at this, and I'm going to count up the number of degrees. And so with five sides, I have three triangles, okay? So then I'm going to have 540 degrees. You see how this progression is going. I'm going to do the same thing with a hexagon. And when I connect that hexagon, I have formed four triangles. So I've got six sides, four triangles. And in terms of degrees, I'm going to write in yellow so you can see it a little bit better. You've got 180, 180, 180, and 180. If you're doing your addition out there in the virtual world, you get 720 degrees. So in general, let's see the pattern here. I'm going to go back for a second. We have 3, and if we subtract 2, we get 1. If we subtract 2, we get 2. And 1 was 180. So if I multiply this by 180, it equals 180. If I multiply this by 180, it equals 360. Let's go over here. So I subtract 2, and then I multiply by 180. I subtract 2, and I multiply by 180. So in general, an n-gon has how many sides? You don't even need to pause here. How many sides does it have? It has n sides. 
So if I'm following the pattern, if I say, what have each of these had in common? I'm going to subtract 2. Well, what is n minus 2? I don't know what n is, but n minus 2 would be n minus 2. Hello. Okay? So if I'm following the pattern once again, I multiply it by 180. To get the interior angle sums, I'm going to say this is n minus 2 times 180. This is my general form. It has worked for every shape up to this point, and I'm telling you it's going to work for every shape. So if I have a, a shape with 100 sides, it'd be a little bit difficult to draw. But if it has 100 sides, I'm going to do n minus 2, so 100 minus 2 times 180. Okay, that's going to give me the interior angle measures. Interior angle measures. Okay, so that's the inside of the shape. All right, so if we're going on and we go to these theorems, you can go ahead and pause it right here, write these down. This theorem is what we just talked about. The sum of the interior angles of a polygon is n minus 2, where n is the number of sides. Okay, so n is the number of sides. So if it's got 8, if it's got 6, if it's got 3, if it's got a million, n is the number of sides. The corollary to that is when I have a regular polygon, regular, remember, means all sides and angles are congruent. I'm going to take the sum of the interior angles. total of the interior angles, and divide it by the number of angles. Because I want equal numbers of degrees in each, so I'm going to divide the total by the number of angles. It's pretty intuitive. So once again, feel free to pause it right here. I'm going to go on, but you can pause it and write that down. So if I look at a shape like this, immediately I notice off the bat that this is not regular. However, I can still figure out the number of degrees, and so if I'm saying how many degrees are in this whole thing, that's going to help me find x. So if I'm finding x, I need to know the total. Well, in order to figure out the total, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, what kind of shape is this? How many sides does it have? So let's number them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Once again, go ahead. Feel free to pause this. Write this example down. You may see this kind on a quiz. Okay, so I technically have a hexagon. So to figure out for a hexagon, the number of degrees the number of degrees is equal to n minus 2 times 180, or you could look on your chart. So I've got 6 minus 2 times 180. And that's going to be 4 times 180, which is equal to 720 degrees total. Now, how many degrees do I have? Well, I'm missing one angle. I'm missing this x here. Okay, But total so far, I have 88 plus 142 plus 109 plus x plus 136 plus 136, and that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so when you take that total, I'm going to get 607 plus x is equal to 720. Okay, So the total of these numbers is 607. Okay, plus x is equal to 720. So I'm just going to subtract 607 from both sides. I get x is equal to 113. Okay, so this x is 113 because I used the total number of degrees in the whole shape and then subtracted what I already had. And so example two is going to be sort of like this. 
So I'm going to say the measure of each interior angle is equal to 140 degrees. So if I'm looking at that, I'm saying, how many sides does it have? Well, what I'm saying is my equation for the number of degrees in one of a regular polygon, hello, regular polygon, all of them are equal to 140. Well, I can't just start throwing out 140s because I don't know the angles, I don't know how many there are, and so I'm going to set it equal to this formula that says this is the number of degrees in the angle of a regular polygon. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for n. Stay with me here. Once again, feel free to pause this whenever possible. I would say you need to write this down. I've seen it on the test. I have seen the test. So I get 140n because I want to get n out of the denominator n minus 2 times 180. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide by 140. Sorry, divide by 180. Okay. Now, if I do this, what is going to happen? I'm going to have n minus 2 is equal to a fraction of n. It seems like a good idea. But let's recall something for a minute. This is what would seem natural to you. But if I look at what this actually means, let's, let's approach this from a different way. Because that would work. And so some of you at home are probably going, well, I know how to do this. Especially if you paused it, you're going, I know how to do this. I did it that way. I got a fraction of n. I don't normally like fractions. And so let's, let's attack this from a different perspective. What if I distributed this 180? And then I said I had 140n is equal to 180n minus 360. Check that out for a minute. And so now I can combine these like terms. I can say I can subtract 180n minus 180n. This goes away. So I've got negative 40n is equal to negative 360. Be sure to mind the negative signs. So I've got negative 140 or negative 40n is equal to negative 360. So I'm going to divide by negative 40. So I get n is equal to 9. Well, what was, what was I trying to find? I was trying to find how many sides. Can we have a figure with 9 sides? Absolutely we can. Of course we can. It's called a nonagon. So this is a regular nonagon. Okay? Once again, feel free. Pause. Go back. Review that one. Theorem 11.2. Polygon exterior angle theorem. The sum of the exterior angles of a polygon, one at each vertex, is 360. This is what that looks like. I'm going to breeze over this pretty quickly because this should be something that we've seen before. If I drew a line from each vertex along each side and I went in one direction, notice I'm going like a pinwheel effect. I'm going in the pinwheel effect. Here are the exterior angles. Notice, it's, this is a pentagon. It has five sides. It has five exterior angles. That makes sense because there's five corners. There's going to be five exterior angles. Corollary, 11.2. The measure of each exterior angle in a regular polygon. So once again, I know that I have 360 degrees total. And I'm going to divide that by the number of sides. So it's going to be 360 divided by n because the total would be 360. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I've got 5 angles. I'm going to divide the total number of degrees, 360, by 5. Here we go. Here's, two exam here's an example. 3A. 3B is coming next. So if I was going to do this example, and feel free to pause this, if I was going to do this example, what would I need to do? Stay tuned for the next video, the next part. I'm going to divide this one into two videos for you. So here's an example that you can try right now while you're looking up the next video.